Namaste. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Uladu Narpadu. It's Sunday morning. We have another verse for you. It's so nice and cool up here. I don't want to be downstairs in the studio with all the hot lights on and everything. Have to turn on the AC. What a bummer. This is beautiful up here, so just put up with the background noise. <laughs> okay, today's verse. Very interesting verse. When we scrutinize, except we, the known existing reality, I am, where is time and where is place? That is, when we keenly scrutinize ourselves through the inquiry who am I? It will be found that there exists no such thing as time or place, but only we, the reality or self. If we are the body, that is, if we mistake oneself to be the body, we shall be caught in time and place. But are we the body? If we inquire, if I am not the body, then who am I? We will realize that since we are the one reality, now, then, and always, the one reality, here, there, and everywhere, the we, or self, who is devoid of time and place, alone exist, and time and place do not exist. It's an amazing verse, isn't it? First of all, the syntax is very complicated, and there's a reason for that. The Tamil language that uh, Ramana wrote this in is not ordinary Tamil, not everyday street Tamil. It is high literary or poetic Tamil, and uh, many of the words have redundant meanings or self-referential meanings, recursive meanings, and so on. Uh, so the syntax becomes very convoluted, especially when rendered in English. <laughs> so this rendering is by Sri Sadhu Om, who is one of the great scholars who has interpreted Ramana's work for us. And because of this, it sounds almost, I mean, it sounds implausible, you know, on first hearing. I'm sure many of you are thinking, what is he talking about? Time and place doesn't exist? You know, what kind of nonsense is this? Hold on and listen. <laughs> what is time? And what is place? Place is a location in space and time. We call our location in space here. And we call our location in time now. But is that all there is to space and time? No. No, space and time are practically unlimited. I say practically unlimited because everything there is, including space and time, has to have a beginning and an end. Space and time don't exist independently. They have cause. And because they have a cause, that means they're dependent. And because they're dependent, it means their reality is only relative. It's not absolute. So then what is the absolute on which time and space depend? Well, it can only be one thing, the self. The self is pure awareness, absolute objectless, non-dual awareness, without boundaries, without a second thing to be aware of, <laughs> and so on. You might say, well then, oh, what about this time and space and all this phenomena and the worlds and everything that we see and experience? Well, as we have pointed out, or as Ramana has pointed out, and we try, try our best to discuss it, 
the world comes into existence along with the ego, along with the body, the idea, I am the body, whether the body is subtle or gross. It has to have a location. So that necessitates the existence of time and space. Location in time, location in space. And that is a big part of who we are, who we think we are. Because the mind is also <laughs> something that we will into existence by means of desire and our concept of who we are. So all these things are mutually interdependent. You can't have time and space without a body, nor can you have a body without an ego, nor can you have an ego without a mind. So without mind, no ego, without ego, no body, without body, no time and place. Now, this is not just sophisticated philosophy. Try to understand. People think that, oh yes, you're, you're a non-dualist, or you're a monist, which, which we're not. We're non-dualists. <laughs> and you have a, a certain view, you have a certain philosophy. Of, oh, everything's all one. Actually, we don't. <laughs> but anyway, that's what people think. And because of that, you say, that time and space aren't real, the worlds aren't real, there is no God in the sense of it. No, no, just hold on. We're not saying that time and space or location and temporality don't exist. We're saying that they don't exist absolutely as a context. Rather, they exist within the context of I am, meaning I am the ego, I am the body. It's a package. The whole thing comes into existence at once. What's the proof? When you sleep at night, the whole mess disappears. The body, the mind, the ego, and all the ideas and thoughts and desires associated with them the world, the senses, the body, space, time, gone. What is there? Only the self, only this pure objectless awareness. But you might say, well, then why don't I remember that? <laughs> because now you're covered with ego. You're covered with ignorance. You're covered with desire. And so, there's nothing to desire if there's no world, if there's no senses or body. So it just looks like pure ignorance. This is called the uh, Ananda Maya Kosha. The Ananda Maya Kosha is the last and most subtle covering on the self, with a capital S. So we can experience these things. It's not theory. In fact, it does not originate from someone's mental speculation at all. Rather, it originates from Ramana Maharshi's experience, his spontaneous, complete enlightenment at age 16. Then later on, when scholarly intelligent people began to learn of his existence, they came to him and showed him the holy books showed him the scriptures by Shankara and others that describe these states. And he said, oh yeah, yeah, that's it. That's what I experience. So in other words, it's not theory, it's not philosophy. It's not mental speculation. It's not theology or religion. It's not any of that. It's experiential. It's phenomenological self-observation. Just like a few episodes ago, we talked about Buddha's description of the root sequence, the mula pariyaya. Huh? The root sequence is the root th sequence of thoughts that creates the ego. And 
we had a nice illustration of a triangle or a pyramid with the eye on top and all the layers and everything supporting it. Was that just mental speculation by the Buddha? No. It came from his personal self-observation. How the mind creates this phony thing called an ego, an I. And it does it by identifying certain perceptions as mine. After all, if all this stuff is mine, my body, my eyes, my ears, my tongue, and so on, my senses, my mind, with all of my thoughts, there must be an I, right? <laughs> That's called an inferential proof. There's no direct evidence for the existence of this I. But indirectly, by creating all these things that are mine, or rather labeling all these objects as mine, one creates the sense or feeling that, well, there must be an I. But not really. <laughs> so the Buddha is saying, if you look into it, if you look into yourself, if you look into your own mind, you will see. This is what's going on. It's meant as a guide for self-observation. And similarly, when we say time and place do not exist, uh, the I, the ego, the mind do not exist, only the pure objectless awareness, the unconditioned consciousness exists, and everything else is more or less dependent on it, like the froth on the waves of the ocean of awareness. This is not a theory. This is our experience. That's why we can talk about it so clearly. We don't have to think about it. <laughs> we directly see it. We experience it every moment. This is called self-realization. Huh? We have realized the self. And it's easy. It's effortless, in fact. All you have to do is adopt the right view. Well, it's like we're up here on the roof, and you can see the holy mountain. You can see the, the hotel in the background and all the trees and stuff back there. And here you can hear the birds and, and hear the nice music coming from the temple. <laughs> Why? Because we're up here on the roof. This point of view exposes all of that. And it's no effort at all. We just look around and it's there. If we go downstairs in the house, we don't see all this. We don't hear all this. Huh? It's cut off by the walls. Similarly, <laughs> you can see where I'm going with this, right? If we stay within the walls, the narrow little confines of our ego. <laughs> Please, don't make me stay there. Uh, we don't get to see all these things that Ramana is talking about. But once we follow his instructions and inquire into this I, where is this I coming from? Huh? Where is it? And not just out of words, who am I? Oh, I'm Joe, Joe Blow from Kokomo. And, you know, no, no, no. Not just words, but to sense the reality of where does this I arise from? How does it come into being? Huh? Where are the steps of Buddha's Mulaparayaya? Can you see them? Can you observe them in yourself? Because if you do, you'll have to come to the same conclusion that the I doesn't exist. And along with the I not existing, all the stuff that's dependent on it also doesn't exist. So, <laughs> by adopting this point of view, then all the details of self-realization are revealed automatically, just by looking just by being, just by seeing. Om Tatsat.
ओम हरि ओम